you think. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you. These Lights Out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. And now, if you haven't already done so, turn off your lights now. And listen to Revolt of the Worms. All I can do is sit and think and wait. Wait for the floors to lift and the walls to crash. Facts. Think of facts. Yes, a journal of facts. Think. How it began. Why, it's happening. Journal of facts until the walls crash in and the thick flesh. Charles Prentice. There's a fact. Chemist. And fool. Fool. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away from reality. War. 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 Run away. You mean we're going to live in this godforsaken place, Charles? Yes, Claire, I remember. You did say that. And I said... Of course we're going to live here. It's ideal for my work. But we're so far away from everything, Charles. So far away from what? Your friends? My friends? All right, Charles. Whatever you say, Charles. You never disagreed with me, did you, Claire? Why, it's so quiet up here, it's almost as if we are out of this world. Yes, I remember. Young Jackson, you did say that. I like working with you, sir. Why, up here, it's almost as if we were out of this world. Out of the world. I wanted to be out of the world. Hide. Until it's over. Yes, why not? Why not? What are you going all the way up there for, Prentice? To do my work, of course. But who cares about propagating new varieties of roses at a time like this? The times have nothing to do with it. I'll do what I please. I'll do what I please. But, Prentice, to leave suddenly like this, it doesn't make sense. Roses are fine in normal times, but a chemist of your ability? In times like these, certainly there's more productive work that you could do. I'm not interested in your opinions. I'll do what I please. You hear me? Do what I please. Do? What I please. Yes, sir. Everything's ready, sir. Greenhouse. All ready for you, sir. One week ago, Wednesday. Does the wind always blow up here, Charles? Eh? I said the wind. Does it always blow like that? Why? Frightening. Mighty less frightening than the things that are happening back in the city. I suppose so. I know so. Where's that boy? Jackson. Yes, sir. The phosphates, are they ready yet? Uh, not quite, sir. Well, get them ready. Every one of the plants. We work late tonight. Very late. Work late and hard. That was the answer to everything. Chemist of your ability. In times like these, there certainly must be more important work than propagating roses that you could do. A chemist of your ability. In times like these, there certainly must be more important work. No, I wouldn't think of that, I told myself. Wouldn't think of that. Roses. Yes, develop the greatest rose in the world. That would be my answer to them. While they bombed and burned, I'd develop the largest rose the world had ever known. And when the world settled down again, I'd come back and bring the rose to them, and they wouldn't care if I had run away. My plan. Why did it go wrong? Claire, why did it go wrong? Claire... Oh. Dead. You're dead. They killed you. Dead as I'll be dead. If I could only think, why did it go wrong? Well, I put the solution that's left over, Mr. Prentice. Yes, I do remember. That was it. Oh, gosh, Mr. Prentice, I'm trying to understand, but I'm so tired. You must keep working. The only salvation is to work. What's salvation got to do with roses? Don't be impertinent. Do your work. Yes, sir. Two cc for each plant, and careful, don't let any of it touch the stem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You weren't very happy, were you, Jackson? Those were things you couldn't understand. It it isn't that I I don't want to work, Mr. Prentice. It's just that I'm all mixed up. Uh, These roses. Why do I have to pour this stuff on them every hour on the hour? It doesn't make sense. Hormones? Sure, I know what they are. Secretions from the glands in the human body. Sure, I know what they're for. Make us grow and everything. I get it. That, that's what you try to do with the roses and make them grow fast and big. But 
How do you know these hormones will work on plants, Mr. Prentice? And how do you know how much to give them? And, and how big will the roses grow, Mr. Prentice? Questions. Everlasting questions. But now I ask them, why did it go wrong? Thursday. Thursday? What do I remember? Well, I throw the hormone mixture that's left over, Mr. Prentice. Mr. Prentice, I said, well, I throw the hormone... No way! Me. Can't you see that I'm working? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I remember. Friday. What a Friday. Friday night. Claire? Yes? Is that you? Yes, Charles. What are you doing walking out here in the dark? It's a lovely night. Romantic at your age. I just like the night. You women, come back to the house. All right. Crazy, walking around in the dark. That, oh, what's the matter with you? Can't you walk? If I hadn't caught you... It's slippery. What are you talking about? It's so slippery around here. Don't talk foolishness. But it is. By George, you're right. What? Stand still, I'll light a match. I had some... Yes. Now, we'll see what... Charles, stop grabbing. What? <laughs> worms. What? Well, can't you see? Just ordinary earthworms. Mat crawlers. You just walked over a few of them. Now you women with your fears and your squeamishness. Walked on a few worms and you make more noise and more fuss. Yes. I remember. Friday night. Take the extra hormone solution. Where will I throw it, Mr. Prentice? Mr. Prentice... Where will I throw the extra hormone solution? Saturday. And then the night. Jackson! Jackson, where are you? Jackson, I told you to stay in the house. Jackson, where are you? It's time to feed the plants. Jackson, where are you? He's not Claire. here, Charles. Uh, Claire, you startled me walking up like that. I didn't mean to. That infernal boy, where is he? Have you seen him? He's not in the house. But I told him not to go out. I told him only an hour ago he's got to work all night. The plants must be watered every hour on the hour. He went out. Well, why didn't you stop him? Now I have to go chase after him. Jackson! Jackson, are you out there? Come in. Charles, what? What did you think it was? Thunder. It's starting to rain. Shut the door. Shut the door, I say. But the boy... If he hasn't the sense to come in out of the rain, it's just too bad. I've got enough to do with worrying about my roses without worrying about him. And don't you go out after him. He'll come back. He'll come back. Saturday night. And when it was day again... Charles, Charles, wake huh? up. Huh? Please wake up. Oh, where? You're on the couch. You fell asleep on the couch. Charles, oh. get up right away. Oh, what's the matter with you? Why should I get up? What difference does it make? Listen to me, please. The boy, he isn't back yet. Huh? Jackson, he isn't back yet. Charles, where can he be? The storm, you slept, I waited. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you looked in his room? I just came from there. Charles, where uh, could he have gone to? All through the oh, storm. Oh, stop talking so much and let me get up. Let's go see. Oh. Must you follow me? Why didn't you wake me up? Why did you let me sleep? Uh, you must have fallen asleep, too. I opened my eyes. It was day. Oh, Charles. Oh, stop old oh, Charlesing me. Crazy young fool, so he spent the night outside. So what's the difference? Teach him a lesson. Well, no wonder he isn't back yet. Fog like this, it's as bad as night. Charles, I... All right, all right. What am I supposed to do? Go wandering through fog like a bloodhound, like a fool? Don't worry, he'll be back. He'll be back. But you never did come back, did you, Jackson? When the sun came out and that everlasting wind came up and lifted the fog. Charles, Charles, come here. Where? Uh, where are you? Back at the house, Charles. Come quickly. Oh. oh, what is it? What do you want now? The boy isn't around. I... I've looked everywhere. Charles, now, what... what's happened back here? What? Look at the ground. Well, what? Who plowed this ground up? Plowed? Yes, yeah, certainly plowed. Can't you see? Some crazy drunken fool plowed up the ground. But during the night... Charles, how could that be? You believe what you see, don't you? It's that boy. What? Yes, that Jackson went crazy, found a plow, tore up the ground, and ran away. Went out of his mind, that's it. The boy's gone crazy, tearing up the ground. Gone crazy. Gone crazy. And then... 
then that night, that same night after I thought Jackson had gone crazy, run away, I went back to my work Sunday night. Charles, Charles, can I speak to you? Charles, please stop your work and talk to me. Haven't you lived with me enough years to know I don't like to be interrupted when I'm working? But I'm frightened. Are you? Really? Charles, stop it. Are you out of your mind? Yes, maybe I am. What did you say? Maybe I am crazy. All right, maybe I am. That's the only way I could have lived with you all these years. What? Endured your selfishness, your unbelievable selfishness. Well... Everything's for you for 20 years, everything for you. Now, that's enough. Your work, your pleasures, what you think, what you want, everything for you, nothing for anyone else. Will you the shut up? The gentle little Mr. Prent is the scientist, the good husband who never lifts his voice. Mother in heaven, I'd rather be married to a fool with a heart in him than you. Well, then... You haven't got a heart. You never had a heart. It's you, you, and no one else, and that boy can be dead out there and you don't care, and I can be dead and you don't care as long as you're safe and doing what you want to do. Will you go away and let me go on with my work? Charles, Charles, I'm fighting that boy. Now there are noises. I'm asking you for the last time to go away and let me do my work. But listen to me. You've been out here all night. I've been in the back of the house alone, and I've been listening, and I didn't want to come in here, but I had to. Charles, things I said, I meant them. For years, I'd meant them. All right, that doesn't matter. But I tell you this, there's something outside the house. Find out what it is, Charles. Twenty years ago, I thought you were an irrational woman. I thought I'd trained you out of that irrationality. I was wrong. I'll humor you just this once, but never again. Where are these noises? At the back of the house. The lantern handed to me? Yes. Thank you. You're frightened. You don't have to go with me. I want to know... What? That you're a fool? Well? So what am I supposed to hear? There's nothing. Hello out there. Hello! Well, what now? Listen. To what? Listen. To what? I... I thought... You heard the wind whistling through the cracks in your brain. Come into the house. Charles, wait. Wait for... Uh... Here? Yeah. So what? Give me the lantern. If it's that boy... Oh, it could be him, couldn't that it? That crazy young fool playing practical jokes. If I get around the corner of the house and... <laughs> What's going on here? Charles. Something moving under the ground. Yes. Yeah. So dark. Can't quite make out. Charles. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. Animal of some sort? Take me back to the house. Oh, go yourself. Moon will come out of the clouds. See what this is. Give me the lantern, Charles. No, I want to see. The house is back there. Turn around and go back to it. Go ahead. All right. All right. Yes. It is something burrowing. Infernal moon come out. I'd see there... Coming out. Now I'll see what... Holes. Holes in the ground all over. What are they? Who... Bomb craters? But that isn't possible. No. Animal burrows. But what animal could make a hole four feet across? What animal... Where? Where are you? Claire! So dark, I can't see you. Claire! Where are you? Claire! Claire! Where are you? Claire! Yes, Claire. Claire! I ran through the night looking for you. The echo of my voice is still in my ears. Looking for you and the moon was under the clouds and I couldn't see you and I couldn't find you. And then I did. You had fallen into one of those craters. 
at one of those holes in the ground. I couldn't see you, but I could hear you. But which one of the holes? They were all over ground, pockmarked with them. I ran around in the dark. I could hear you, but couldn't find you. And then the moon, it was out again. Oh, blast the moon. Why did it come out? If it hadn't come out, I wouldn't have seen. And my head... Stop it, stop it, stop it, Claire, stop it. I can still hear you. I can still see you. Your body down in that hole. As I ran toward you, suddenly I saw that something else was coming toward you. Something that glistened wet in the moonlight. Something long and slimy. A great twisting snake. Yet not a snake. Not a snake. And the fear in me made me fall to the ground, and I saw as I lay there, I saw. The thing moved toward the hole in the ground as if you weren't there. As if it were blind, you couldn't see. It's like a great blind worm. It was a worm. A worm, ten, twenty, no, thirty feet long, crawling in fright to its home in the ground. And it moved toward you, Claire. Covered you. Crushed you. You're dead, Claire. You've been dead for two days. Why should I tear out of my memory all the horror of how you died? Of how young Jackson must have died? Well, I throw the extra hormone solution, Mr. Prentice. Well, I throw the extra hormone solution, Mr. Prentice. Yes. That's very funny, isn't it, Jackson? I ran away and I was going to bring back to the world the greatest rose... But I brought back the greatest worms. The hormones you threw away soaked into the ground and into them. Hundreds of little worms burrowing under the ground, soaking into their flesh, into their life process, miraculously increasing the growth of them. Until overnight they grew and grew without limit into those terrible horrors. And they are still growing... I can hear them. For the last two days, squirming around the house and over it, great monstrous pieces of slimy flesh squirming and writhing. Hundreds of them. Thousands of them. Burrowing under the ground and at night coming out of the ground. I have seen them A sea of flesh. A sea of worms. Yes, I hear you out there, you worms. You were under the ground and now there's no room underground for you, so you've come out of the ground. The world was yours first, so now you're going to take it back again. The world for the worms. You're under the house. You're lifting it. The walls will fall and crush me and I'll be dead and I want to be dead. Yes, now I know why this is happening to me. I thought I could run away from the world and what is happening in the world. You hear that, you worms out there? I thought I could run away. Oh. Oh, I'm very tired. Just sit here and wait. Wait for them. I know how I'll die. The walls falling, crushing. Window. Something behind me. A worm at the window, head looking in. He's crawling in and 
And another following. And another. They're filling the room. Worms. All around me. The worms. The worms. All around me. The worms covering me. Cold flesh. Wet flesh. The worms. The worms. you